We've created a set of visual cues that are specific to making visual art in the classroom. So today we have some examples of a lesson on color theory and mixing colors. In our to-do column, these are the things that we're going to be doing throughout the day. We're going to be painting. So we have a visual cue card with an image of a paintbrush and some color. And then at the end of the day, once we've done our activity, we're going to be cleaning up, washing our hands, and reflecting on the activity that we've done. In this instance, I have red, blue, and yellow. So while we're asking students to wait for these three colors to be passed out, we may provide them with tools, such as this stress ball here, that will help with the waiting process, especially for students who may have more difficulty sitting and waiting for something to happen, students that benefit from using something like a fidget spinner. We have this tool here that we've also marked with wait, which you will recognize from this sign up here as well. So students are able to do something even while they're in the waiting process. Today we'll be making two new colors. These colors are purple and green, which we'll also point out on our color wheel. After we have created our new colors, we'll move all of the activities that we've done that day to our all done column. So today we've listened, we've looked, we used paint. Students cleaned up their tables and washed their hands. And at the end of the lesson, we reflected on the work we did. You can move over the items that you did in your create column if you'd like. So here we, we created purple and green. This is an example of the visual cues we would use to teach in a visual arts classroom. So now we're gonna look at some adaptive tools when teaching music. First thing is, there's lots of different ways to explore our musical world. Sometimes we'll be using melody, sometimes just natural sounds, sometimes we're thinking about chords. Let's start with the basics, like a maraca. Not every student we work with will be able to grip the maraca. If their fine motor skills aren't strong, there are natural shakers that you can use that have a softer sound. Sometimes people have auditory sensitivity. In the world of natural sounds, there are rain sticks. There are beautiful, soothing sound to play in our classroom. It's very nice as a meditation activity. It's also great to do a nature scape of sounds. So for example, we'll say, oh, it's gonna rain really lightly now. What are the sounds of the storm? We can use recycled or reused tools such as this embroidery hoop, which can also double as a drum. When I've worked with students with different ranges of abilities, I've noticed that not every student is necessarily listening to the sound, but some of them also feel the vibrations. So even standing over a student with a drum and tapping it. I've had students who are visually impaired, they'll want to reach up and touch it and that's a really fun experience for students. We can combine music with movement when we have instruments that have a variety of tones. For example, we can start out as a tiny little seed and go, the seed is gonna grow into a beautiful rose. And the students get bigger, bigger, bigger. We can use one of our adaptive tools for students who have a harder time with small grip and they can grip it like this and be able to play along as well. When you're talking about melody, there's lots of different ways to teach melody. It doesn't have to be such a small object. We have these great boom whackers that make different tones as well. So these are just examples of some of the adaptive tools we can use when exploring music in the classroom. So now we're talking about adaptive tools with visual arts. And one of the key elements that we utilize is textures. We want to make sure that we meet all of our students where they're at. Sensory materials are a really critical component of that. So sometimes with visual arts, we utilize elements that have sound to them. So in this case, we have made sculptures and different pieces of art out of brown paper bags because they have a lovely kind of soft sound to it. And with plastic, because the wrapper is smooth and the texture feels good and the sound is good. And then even aluminum foil, which has a totally different sound and can be crinkly. So for visually impaired students, we want to have additional tools. These are actually old ornaments that were donated to us 
but they're a great way to teach about lines and shapes and students can feel them and they can lay them down. We also want to make sure that we have tools that can reach different kinds of grips. Things like really big natural sponges are also easy because the grip you can grab from multiple areas. So whether that means taking something as simple as a stress ball and just cutting a hole into it so that you could put this into a student's hand so they can have grip, or we especially like to use recycled tools with our students to show that you can make something out of nothing. We oftentimes use mat board and you can get this donated from any art supply store because they use it when they're trimming out and framing something and then usually they just throw those things away. So it's really thick, so students can't paint through it, they can't destroy it, and then they can make rich and beautiful pieces of art. And they can build upon that art. This piece has about four different layers on it and is printmaking. So we wanna make sure that we're reaching learners where they at and are getting all of their senses. Let's look at some adaptive tools for teaching dance or movement. Not all students have the fine motor to grip little ribbons or things like that um, that you may use when doing creative movement. So using a weighted bean bag, it fits into hand very easily. You can actually place it if a student has a visual impairment. The weight of it and the thickness will help them be able to grip it and be able to move it. Shiny fabric is always a great idea. It not only catches the eyes of anyone watching, but students, again, with low vision, really do it does catch their eye a little better. And for a fine motor, you could easily adapt anything by using something you have at home. A gallon of milk, varying in sizes, so that students can slide their hand in and, again, be able to enjoy the beauty of the movement with the ribbons. This is also a great idea for when you're doing movement on stage, cross-lateral movements from the brain dance or our core and distal to give them something exciting to put their focus on. Again, eye tracking, it's a lot more fun to track something pretty and fun with your eyes. And this provides a really great grip for students who need that kind of support. One of the things about theater is we want our students to be able to express themselves and share stories in a variety of ways. And one of the ways to do that is by using a beautiful and amazing parachute. So a parachute is so much fun because you can create all different kinds of worlds. You can have students of all different mobilities hold onto that parachute around the edges, float it up into the sky, and kids in wheelchairs or kids with full mobility can run or wheel under that, and in it, they're in the desert, or they're under the rainforest. If you don't have a parachute, you can use big pieces of fabric and do the exact same thing. Through this beautiful little technique, you can utilize and create multiple worlds, and it's really a treasure, and kids love using this. The other thing that we use a lot of is different kinds of hand puppets. This is a wonderful tool for students of all abilities, and particularly those that have a hard time with eye contact. They might not want to look at another kid in the classroom, another actor in that classroom, to create a story with, but they will through a puppet. There are so many different ways for kids to share their own stories and share who they are in the world. We just want our kids to be able to show their imagination. You can also use a slate in the classroom because sometimes kids love saying this is the beginning, this is the middle, and this is the end. For more information, go to youthandarts.org.